we play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome back to the Freak Show. I'm your host, Bumpy McSquiggums, and today we're diving back into Lawn Mowing Simulator. And instead of continuing with our freshly minted uh, career, we're going to actually just dive into the other one. I, I feel like I kind of got to show you guys how the game started and everything else, and I don't really feel like there's going to be a tremendous loss. Now, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe this will just be a one-off video where I'm going further ahead, but I don't really feel like you guys are going to miss out or lose much if I am playing on one that I play on my own, and we just go to various different areas, we do the different lawns, and so on and so forth. So... Let me know your thoughts, guys and gals. It, it would be kind of nice to go through a career mode from beginning to end. Um, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm a little torn because, there, you know, there, there's a bit of, we'll say, quote-unquote grinding, which is just the gameplay in, in and of itself, and, you know, that's not really a problem, but we're not going to be able to advance very quickly right away until we've spent quite a few hours into the game. So, you guys let me know your thoughts as we get further along. All right, so our upgrade, or sorry, our HQ is fully upgraded. Uh, the one that we're in now, we can actually purchase a new HQ. But I think we have this one. Yeah, yeah, we went and we bought the super high-end uh, thing. All of the bays are available. So we can have every lawnmower imaginable. But essentially, you start off with, with just the first one. And then you're able to, you know, increase it as you go. We, uh, we, I think we have some advertising going. So this will help us increase our RP, our reputation points, to get more and more missions and things available. Uh, the big one here, it costs a lot, it's 20 days. It's the least amount of RP per day, but it's set for 20 days and you don't have any additional costs. This one's a pretty good one for five days, a little bit better, we have 140. And then this one is super expensive, one day. So... And, you know, decent RP per day. So if you're really looking to up your RP, then that's the way to do it. I believe right now they are maxed out on the number of employees that you can have at two. Uh, I'm going to go take a look, see if we can't get another one. Maybe we'll pull Summer Chambers or Poppy Man. I don't know, or Luca Wheeler. We got some options. Uh, we get Alfie Johnson. Eh? Eh? These are wages per week. Let's just see if they'll let me hire anymore. I'm able to hire. Okay. So this is, again, I believe the maximum amount that we're allowed to have at this point. I believe more is going to be possible later on down the road. But right now we have two plus ourselves. Uh, no, we don't want to back out. Then we can go shopping and we can shop all the various different things. Or we can go into our various different things and go ahead and make sure we're all maintenanced up. And I believe that everything is maintenanced up. And then there's the uh, the Skag Turf Tiger. Uh, actually, this is not the Turf Tiger. There's the Turf Tiger. This is the uh, the Patriot 52. The Turf Tiger is the the big bad. He's the good one. He's the one I like. I loves him. We take a look. Uh, we started off with, I guess, this one. And then uh, I picked up, I believe, this one. The ZTA one. And then I... Actually, I didn't pick that one up first. I actually went from this one, and I went all the way over to the... The Skag Turf Tiger 2. And that was the one that I picked up. But you see there's others here. A lot of the Toro. This is a lot of folks' favorite. The Groundsmaster 3300. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty good, but I'm a big fan of the uh, big old fan of the Turf Tiger. But we'll see. Eventually, you know, we'll, we'll do what we got to do. Anyhow, so let let's get into it. Uh, active loans. I do have a lot of loans going right now. If we take a look, we've got a ten thousand, a twenty five thousand, a fifty thousand going. Uh, we're barely able to make the payments. I'd love to pay one of these off so I don't have to pay more, but every time I start making the money to do so, it's just not going to work. All right, so let's go take a look around. So we have the Orchard. We have Weaver's Square, which is a trash pickup one. Uh, let's see here. We have the Rowley Manor. Uh, I might go do that one. Actually, maybe... Uh... 
anything special about it? I don't think so. And then we have the Garden Hilltop House and the Crossley Writing School. All right, so I think I've already set all of our stuff, so we just need to get to it. So yeah, I'm going with the Orchard, apparently. That's the one that I've chosen. So I find that you get less money if you let your your people go and do the, the mission. So any of the more expensive ones, like this one's 2800 uh, I like to dive in and do myself. Once you, yep, contract, got it. Turf Tiger, two, it's it's my boy. And of course, we're going to go ahead with that. And I think it's time. So we're going to, well, you guys are going to sit back and relax. I am too. And we're just going to drive around and mow some lawns, apparently. That's what we do. But first, we're going to go run the, the grounds here. There's a total of seven things to find here. Oh, the orchard's kind of fun, but at the same time, it kind of sucks to, to a degree. Just again, because even with the Turf Tiger 2, I can't quite go full speed the whole time. But at least it's sunny out, so that does make things a little bit nicer. I have my in-headset volume up pretty high. Let me turn that down a little. There we go. I'm like, man, those birds are real loud. It's because I have my volume up to like 90 as opposed to the normal 40. All right, so we're running the grounds. Just gotta get, you know, gotta get our sprint on. And there doesn't seem to be that much going on. Oh, found one there. It's four out of the seven. All right, I dare say that the rest should be like right around these trees. I mean, it's possible that we missed something already. There's another one. There's one, and we got what, one more to go. Ah, uh, that's always disappointing when you got like, aha! I say I didn't go all the way to that corner, and that's usually where it is. I'll go and I'll, I'll forget like one corner, and I didn't fully check, and then I run around the thing a hundred times, and then I finally find it. So I figured I'd look. Let's uh, we'll start with this to just to begin. A little bit. A little bit. We'll, we'll go around the trees uh, on this. We'll start with this front little area here. Doesn't look like you can necessarily damage anything. Nice. Maybe we'll do the corners as well. Simple enough. <laughs> I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it a lot. It's cool that they added that. Again, that's one of the newer features, so it's it's pretty nice. Not necessarily gonna go full crazy because a lot of this we can still hit with our our lawnmower. We don't have to worry too much about it. A little bit of it. Some of the, like, you know, the, the few blades of grass are, like, out in the deep in the turn. I kind of want to get those taken care of. Alright, and then, like, something like here. Just kind of going around in a couple little deep turns. I believe this is popular demand, this feature right here. So, I don't think it's necessarily needed, at least not for what we're doing right now, but I believe, I believe that maybe they're gonna implement stuff that, maybe they're gonna up the uh, amount of money you lose whenever you hit something. Right now it's very small. So I feel like that would make these a bit more viable as a, like a required thing. It's just fun to do, don't get me wrong. 
these people have been clamoring for these for a while, so absolutely. I'm super happy that they exist and that they're here. But yeah, that makes sense, right? But at the same time, it's not necessarily a requirement to get the, the, the old job done, as they say. Part of it here. We have not even finished one percent of the, the long. Don't worry, you guys are gonna really like the turf tiger compared to the last one. Also, I noticed in my first video, guys, gals, there was a bit of uh, every second or so, a few seconds, maybe or every second or so, there was like a small little like catch, a little bit of lag, and I think it's just OBS is getting tired of all the stuff that I throw into it, and sometimes there's just like a little bit of. Uh, I don't, want to, I don't want to say necessarily like a memory leak, but like it's just too much stuff. So sometimes it's better to create like a fresh scene for certain things. And I did that and I tested it and it seemed to be fine. So I'm hoping the recording today looks a bit better. It looks fine like quality wise, except for that little lag spike every uh, so many seconds. So if that drove you guys nuts, hopefully this episode doesn't have that. I, like I said, I, I looked at it after I recorded and I'm like, oh man, I thought I had it. Because I played around with it and I got it looking okay before, but and I even put it in, in the scene with very little extra in the scene. But now I just like, nope, new scene, and yeah, here we are. All right, folks. I mean, we're not fully done. We only did the trees on the left side over here, but it's okay. That's enough to get us started. So let's get started in here. All right. Kick on that engine. You'll notice we have a big old box on the back. Because we're going to suck up all the grass. Uh, what's our height for this? Two and three fourths to three and one eighth. I think it's just going to go three. Turn that on. It does make horrible noises when you get off the ramp. All right. So, the, again, the Turf Tiger is a zero point mower so it can uh, turn on literally a dime all right so here we are we're just cruising I'm not even opening it up oh I destroyed a flower darn it apparently I'm destroying a lot of flowers I'm apparently not noticing how wide my mower is which is not a, a great thing so again first person can definitely help that a little magic uh, ghost rider here and then this is where we kind of took off with the, uh, the strimmer or the string trimmer as it were and we just kind of went all over the place you'll notice the ground is a little uneven so we we bounce and rock a bit and then we like take off sometimes and other times we don't all right I was getting a little carried away there. I was like, nee, 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 nee. a little Mario Kart action going on. It's all good. All right. Oop, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, let's get this. All right, let's see if I can, uh, if I can finagle my view here a little bit. Just have a rough idea where I'm cutting. Maybe not murder as many flowers this time around. Oh, I noticed we missed something with this string trimmer there. Ah. Oh, totally murdered those flowers. I've lost my, my finesse. I used to be pretty okay at this. I mean, not great. Don't get me wrong. Like, not not like next level, like, he's the greatest mower of lawns of all time. But pretty good. And now, uh, yeah, I've definitely lost a little of the finesse that I had once upon a time in Mexico. It's all good, though. And now, I know I said this was going to be story time, and I'll tell at least a little bit of a story to you guys. Uh, as my wife uh, went shopping today, and she brought back something that makes me know that my wife loves me. And uh, I will share that in a little bit. But first, let's get uh, let's open this bad boy up. Let's see what we can get to here. So you notice the speed's a little bit faster, but you also notice right now we're overloading the engine at times. Like it gets a little bit, uh, little I don't want to say tedious, but uh, you can't just full out most of the time, and that kind of sucks. Like right now. 
there's like little patches that are too much for us to handle and you'll notice the blade conditions going down and the, we're overloading the engine and so on and so forth so again that's something that I wish you could maybe throttle back the engine by like a certain percentage and go with it because I feel like that would uh, make make the difference so I'm gonna try going like like half half the deck cutting and I think we can probably keep up at full speed at this point like I said there's a little bit of like finesse and like finagling you can do to make stuff still work and you can always go back over your same track to mow over the grass that you were unable to before. Which is, you know, fine if you want to mow everything twice, or at least some of the things twice, but most people aren't going to want to do that. And I get that. So, again, controlling your speed is oftentimes a super important part. Now, if we're going to be cutting close to these trees, we're going to want to do it on our left-hand side, not our right, because our right-hand side's got the the tube that's sucking up everything, put it in, putting it in the back, and you'll notice on the right-hand side there's like a little trash can that's about half full right there, a little indicator. That is how much is in the back of this thing. Once it fills up, we have to go and unload it, so some stuff. But yeah, you notice if we don't go the full deck width, we can oftentimes go full speed, and it's great. By the way, have I mentioned how much I really like the Turf Tiger? It's great. It is so good. Alright, I, I know I hit some stuff there. Alright, so what I'd like to do is try to find the right angle here. Because you can, I, I'm, I'm just failing horribly at it. We're just crashing into stuff over and over again. But you can find the right angle to actually circle these things and take care of them pretty well. But now with the string trimmers, it makes it a little bit easier on you because you don't have to get quite as close. So again, much appreciated. It might seem slower than just uh, run over the stuff with the lawnmower and try to get close and then take the fines if you hit something. But, you know, it's nice to have the right tools for the job. Oh, that's uneven ground right there. That is a bit of a challenge. All right. So I'm just gonna widen the, the range here a little bit and then tighten it. And yeah, it is a little hard to see through the trees, but eventually you get used to it. Or, or you, just, you just fail epically over and over again. All right, there we go. I think we got the cut that we needed there. And you can always make it a little bit wider so it's a little easier for you to make sure you grab everything with your turf tiger or whatever it is you decide to go. Now, if you guys have grabbed the game yourselves and you've started to play it, uh, let me know your thoughts. I mean, I'm sure you, most people are able to dive into a game and play it several hours in a single day. And, you know, they usually catch up and surpass me on any of the Let's Play series or whatever it is I'm doing, like, almost instantly. And, uh, you know, that's fine, because that's, that's how normal people get to play games. I usually have to play it all segmented up and uh, broken up over several days' time and so on and so forth. Anyway, long story short, uh, do you guys have a favorite mower yourselves that you're uh, running around on in this game? Uh, and I'm just curious as, as to if anyone that is uh, watching has actually picked up the game and checked it out themselves and their initial thoughts on the game. Because, like I said, I, I'm a big fan. I really like it. It's just, it's it's very relaxing. It's enjoyable. You like, like I said, you have, you have. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm sorry, guys and gals. Oh, my lungs hurt today. Um, a little bit of allergies for some reason, which makes no sense to me. Anyway, um, you have your task before you, and you just have to sit there and and do the task. It, you know what it is. I, I have a, a slight allergy uh, or an allergic reaction to grass, like by laying grass, like uh, you know, with no shirt on or whatever. Uh, back it's super itchy and red So I, I definitely have some allergies there usually cut grass doesn't really kill me so Yeah, but obviously this is all digital. It's not what's causing my allergies, but still anyway Yeah, I'm just curious I'm curious uh, as to what folks think of the game if they manage to pick it up and play it themselves if they feel it's as relaxing and cathartic almost uh, as I do if they find it the same way or 
different opinion. If uh, it's you know they like the game or they hate it, you know I'm just curious. I'm just curious as to uh, what other folks think of the game. We're really close to needing to empty our old uh, dumpster box on the back here. Uh, it's just enjoyable. I just like I said, I just really really have fun playing this. It's one of those games you can, for the most part, shut your brain off and just be like. Ah. Sweet, sweet simplicity. And it's, you know, it's not overly simplistic. I mean, there's still stuff that you gotta do. You gotta balance your speed. You gotta make sure you cut everything. But I mean, as far as goals go, not the most intensive goals, to be sure. Alright, so as it stands, we are gonna go and dump our thing. I turned off the blade. And we're gonna pull right over here. We'll be a bloop, bloop. I didn't, I didn't let off the button far enough. And hold A, and it's going to dump everything. Now, you'd think it would dump on the floor, but it's close enough, right? So they just give it to you. You know what? I think what we're going to do... Yeah, we'll just get, a, we'll get off of it instead of shutting everything down first. Alright. I'm, like, vibrating nonstop. What was that all about? Alright. We, we've got some some work to still do, so let's get uh, let's get to hustling, getting our work done, and then we'll be able to finish this up. And uh, it might be a little bit late, but it won't be as bad as the the first episode that was like, super incredibly long. Man. That, that was uh, that was a bit much to be sure. Still waiting for like a Minotaur invasion or something, you know. There's so many games that I play, but there's always something terrible that's gonna happen. You're like, oh, I'm getting used to it. I'm just getting into, you know, how things work, and and then like, surprise, here comes, you know, the invasion from hell or something. But no, nope, I don't really think that's something that we're gonna have to deal with. Apparently, we were overloading the engine of this thing a little bit, which is fascinating. Didn't know I could do that. Again, I'm really experiencing these for the very first time with you guys on the camera. I've not really used them before. So, good stuff all around. I don't know how this is going to, like, I know it keeps telling me that we can recharge it. I don't know if it's going to, like, slow down or stop working at some point, or how that's going to go. I may be making too large of an area around it, but I mean, before we made too narrow of an area, so now I'm, I'm figuring out compensating that way a little bit. Probably don't need quite the area that I'm making, but you know, whatever works for you, whatever you feel like doing. As like I said, there is uh, something fun and exciting about this as always. I always remember I enjoyed this part of it when I was younger, now a little less so, and now it's like a. I gotta walk this thing around and do stuff. Ugh. Can't believe they want me to do two things, you know. So it's, it's fine. Uh, trim through this a little bit more there. Okay, and we'll clean it all up on the inside. I said, if you can find that like perfect uh, circle or at least close to perfect circle. Uh, it helps a lot because then you're able just to get stuff done and handled. So you want to find the right mix of the right analog stick and the left analog stick to really bring it all kind of home, so to speak. Disregard the you know the tree in your face. It's it's probably fine. All right. I mean we could cut a path all the way there if we wanted to. Be a little weird, but we totally good. We may be taking some liberties with this to be sure. Uh, 
I think that's fine. Okay, and basically we got what, three, four, five more trees maybe? And then we're done with the spring trimmer and we're ready to go with the old mower of lawns, the old turf tiger coming back to us. The old skag turf tiger. I mean, you, you gotta appreciate skag anyway, because you know, Borderlands fans, of course. The old skags. I haven't looked, but I'm wondering if the pricing in this game is uh, half to what it costs in real life. Because uh, I, I looked up, I think, the first I did. I don't remember now exactly the price, but it was way more expensive than I thought. I'm like, oh my god. I mean, I, like, I get it, but oh my god, that is way more than I thought it would actually be. I figured they'd be expensive, but like, you can almost get a car. Well, I mean, you can get a used car for more than that, for less than this. Granted, you can get a, some used cars you can get for less than like a bicycle, so like, let's, let's be fair. But again, if you're, uh, you know, if you're into doing like super professional job and you've got a lot of you know, high-end clients or you've got to mow like big giant fields or something, you're going to need the right equipment for the right job. Do I think a lot of people are going to buy these for you know, personal use? I mean, maybe some, but... I mean, we actually have a riding lawnmower here, but, and I keep forgetting, I, I keep wanting to check and I always forget, I want to see what brand it is, um, but it's not something we actually need. I think um, my wife's father, so my father-in-law, I think he ended up getting it as more of a, aha, I can afford this and uh, I have it now as a form to show people that I have prestige and I've, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, acquired, did I shut the engine off? I think I did. There we go. Uh, that I've acquired this much wealth or what? I, I don't know. I don't know the thought process behind it. Like, our lawn is kind of a postage stamp. Not quite, but it's it's not very big, so. Yeah, I don't have the draw distance set up to, like, super high either at this point, so keep that in mind. You guys can set it up a bit more. Uh, game always runs and looks fantastic, but... The thing to be aware of is I want to make sure that it actually works for uh, the recording purposes. So I tend to set it down a little bit on uh, the overall graphics just to make sure it renders in nicely and it looks good. And from what I can see, I'm not noticing any uh, drops in anything right now. Random person running around, or walking around outside. Just glanced over real quick uh, at the recording, and it seems fine. So we'll see how the video comes out at the end. All right, so the story time, guys and gals. That's what you're here for, I know. And, you know, my sweet, sweet lawn mowing prowess, of course. So my wife went to the store today. I was not actually expecting her to do it. I was pleasantly surprised. She's not been wanting to go shopping for a while, and I've been super busy, too, so I haven't been able to go. And uh, so she went to the store today. While I was sleeping. Uh, we're sleeping almost in shifts at this point because we're both so tired. And then we just constantly interrupt each other's sleep, moving around and doing whatever. So anyway, so I went to bed at like 6 a.m. today. She got up by around 8 or 9. So a little bit of overlap. But regardless, back to the story. So she went shopping. She went to Costco. And I think she went to a couple of other places just to get groceries because it's been almost two months since we did a Costco run, which is... Uh, uh, it's a lot for us. Usually we go once every three to six weeks. So two months was a lot. You know, a long distance uh, parting from Costco. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna cut the the uh, time here a little bit. Um, we're gonna do a smaller section. I told you guys I like that instant gratification. Anyhow, so she gets home. She's like, <laughs> and I'm like, um, what's with the evil laugh? She's like, I did good. What do you mean you did good? I got you something that you are absolutely going to love. I'm like, oh, oh, really? And what did you get me? She's like, well, you have to go unload the groceries. All right, all right, I see your game. I see your game. She's like, I got you the best treat in the history of the universe. All right, sorry, the history of Canada. I'm like, okay, okay, sure. So, 
pause on that story time. We're going to go back to other story time. Uh, when I originally moved here to Canada from the U.S., you know, I was a Florida boy. I was my, I'm my wife's Florida boy, as she calls me. Um, so I grew up in Florida, and that's that's where I resided for about 25 years of my little bumpy existence. And uh, she came to me, and she said, uh, hey, come to Canada. I'm like, uh, uh, okay, I guess. So I came to Canada, and uh, there were things. There were things that did not exist in Canada that existed in the U.S., things that I used every day that I enjoyed or ate. Mostly it was food and drink. So uh, one of the big ones at first was there was no Diet Mountain Dew. And honestly, right now, pandemic because of it and the horrible awfulness of all of that, uh, there is no Diet Mountain Dew again. So I've been having to drink other horrible things that I do not enjoy anywhere near as much. I found something I can tolerate, and I am drinking water. So, for all you people who are like, oh, all you drink is, you know, I drink uh, about half and half now. Half water and half uh, sodi pop or soft drink. Anyway, uh, so no Diet Mountain Dew. There were no Funyuns, and criminally, there were no cheeses in all of Canada. So, when we, and all I used to drink was Diet Mountain Dew. I mean, like I said, the water has been a fairly recent addition, and yay, yay for me, right? So I was, uh, you know, we would go back to Maine. We would cross the border, go into Maine, and we would um, we would load up the car with Diet Mountain Dew and bring it back. We did that two or three times. It was expensive, but it was worth it, right? So eventually, Diet Mountain Dew became a thing that they had here in good old Canadian land. And then actually just before the pandemic, they're like, nah, we're not going to carry it anymore. What? We're going to carry Mountain Dew Zero Sugar which is worse. It is worse. It's not bad. It's a it's a second. I wouldn't say it's all right. Compared to everything else, it's a close second, but it's it's still not on par with Diet Mountain Dew for me. Regardless, I know I'm harping on the wrong points here. So Diet Mountain Dew, great. Cheez Its, great. Uh, they eventually came. They're actually the latest thing I think to come to Canada that I had missed from the the old USA days. And uh, the problem, though, is that... And Funyuns also came, by the way. A little bit earlier than the cheeses. And I think Nutter Butters may have always been here, but those were also another one that I missed. All right, so we're all caught up. Canada has all these things that I've had for years and loved, and they're finally here. Again, harping on the Diet Mountain Dew. Sad times, whatever. Moving beyond that. Uh, the cheeses. So there's a problem with the cheeses. They're here. They're a little expensive here compared to back in the U.S., as everything is in Canada. Uh, basically, you're getting a small box for more than you would pay for, like, a family-sized giant box in the U.S. And that's not great. All right, we're going to have to go empty our, our turf tagger here. So my wife came home today with uh, her Costco run. She had me go get the stuff out of the thing, out of the car, and... Lo and behold, a giant box of double, you know, a, a family-sized bag, which they did not have in Canada, uh, but in a box for two giant family-sized bags of Cheez-Its for uh, half the price we would get elsewhere for the same amount, I think. I think it comes out to close to that. So, like, my eyes got all big. I even posted on Twitter, so if you guys want to go see the, the package, it's there. So she got two of those, and I'm like... You need to go back to the store immediately, buy these out so they keep them in stock and they don't take them away. So I found a few things at Costco that I really, really enjoyed. And then I'm just like, oh, well, they weren't selling good or, oh, uh, we couldn't keep the price or whatever whatever the reason. They just stopped carrying them. I'm like, no. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping with all of my being that people latch onto the Cheez-Its, they buy them, and they stay in stock at, at Costco because... Oh my god, a family-sized bag, or two family-sized bags in a single box is the greatest thing ever. It was the best gift of all time. So yeah, that's my story. I know, it's not maybe the most exciting, uh, epic story of all time, but uh, it, was, it was good. I was very happy with the, uh, with the tale. Very, very, very pleased. I said, it was truly a great gift. My wife's gifts came today. I ordered her some stuff. There was this thing that I found... Oops, I, tap that. I was braked fully, but I think I still have like forward momentum. So I tap that tree. It's, it's fine. Um, 
There's some stuff that I was noticing, and, and I, I wanted to get this before, and I hadn't seen it in a while. I almost forgot, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what I was going to get her for, for Christmas. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen, um, basically, the pictures that are printed on metal plates. Like a, like a, like a sheet of metal. And a, essentially, I, I think it's the, the company's called Displate. Now, I'm not particularly thrilled with certain aspects of Displate, but that's, that's fine. And anyway, it's a, you know, it's a picture. Instead of having this big heavy frame and all this other stuff, you know, you get the picture of whatever, whatever dimensions that are there. And uh, essentially, it's got like a magnet you can stick on the wall. And then you can just basically hang your picture. And it's like no, no asshole, no fuss. The designs look really, really awesome. Some really cool designs there and all that stuff. So I ended up getting that, even though it was way more expensive than I wanted it to be. Uh, and then find out shipping to Canada had an extra taxes and service charge. So the gift, basically I had to pay two thirds of the cost of what I got additionally as uh, shipping and handling, which is unacceptable in my opinion. Uh, they did show, because I didn't see it anywhere, and I looked, and I looked, and I looked, and then I finally found it afterward when I said that there was additional you know, cost for me. I was like, there's there's no mention that there's going to be additional cost, but there was. It's a tiny little thing. So if you guys are going to order something from Displate, make sure you guys are careful and you don't get uh, completely uh, screwed over on the uh, shipping and handling. I absolutely did. Um, Considered even canceling the order, but it's something that I know my wife would absolutely love, so I went ahead and got it in there. So I can't wait for Christmas to get to share and show that with her, you know, let her actually see it and enjoy it and touch it and feel it and then, you know, figure out where she's going to put it. So good times all around. Like I said, uh, Christmas is always a big time for us. Uh, we like to, you know, we like to get stuff for each other. Usually I'm really hard to buy for. She got some stuff this year that she says I'm going to love. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Normally, I do tend to get, you know, games. That's, that's what I do. I'm a gamer, right? I, I, that's what I do on YouTube. It's, it sure, it's work at times, uh, but I love them. I, lo I love the games industry. I love games, and I, I'm so happy to be able to share and showcase them with everybody. And, you know, make a, a tiny pittance. Eventually, one day, make a, enough to hopefully support the family. Or, or, you know, baby steps, right? All right. Yeah, I just went, I went and overloaded the old engine there. So we're nearly done. We're definitely going to run long, but not, I don't think, like 55 minutes long or whatever it was. Oops. But I, I cleared that I did not. It's all right. The orchard's fine. Oh, we got to mow over this again. So definitely cut that a little too, uh, a little too close for comfort. Yeah, I know. We'll do a little bit of this. There we go. Clear that out just a bit. We'll do the, uh, the slowly, uh, slowly widening circle here, maybe. All right. Also, uh, thoughts. Uh, do you guys prefer the first person mode? Do you like this third person view that I have? I, I generally prefer this a little bit overall, but I don't mind the first person. Uh, I will probably switch between them on and off periodically. Uh, just, just curious. Just curious what your thoughts are. And what your preferences are. Alright. It's another section down. We're really close to finishing this up. So remember, when you are doing uh, your big turns here at the ends, make sure that you're not going like full speed with uh, your throttle down or you will tear up the turf. I know we're called the Turf Tiger, but we only want to tear up the turf that we're supposed to tear up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is frustrating that there's certain spots that are just too hard for the thing to handle, even going at like a moderate speed. So again, my solution is just like it is in a uh, in real life, if you're running into really stubborn grass, don't use the full breadth of the uh, of the mower. Just go for half of it, and it does seem to work pretty okay. Is it the most efficient? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe holding the speed a little bit lower and going the full, you know, the full width. Maybe that is the better play. I'm not really certain. 
I just know that this is the thing that I do and it seems to work pretty decently for me. In general. Then there's times where you get a cut deep into the grass and then it's a little bit less so. Alright. So my wife is very interested to see what's uh, what I got her. Uh, she knows it's in a tiny thing and I think she thinks they're just pictures and, well, you know, to an extent that is true. But uh, it's a little bit nicer and fancier than pictures. Because I was like, uh, you don't know, maybe I got you some decorative gourds. Maybe I got you a, a sword collection, you know, just random stuff I was going up with. And then with the box, I'm like, ooh, this is smaller. I can't really lie too much about what this is. Hmm. And the, the big thing was I wanted her to be able to pick stuff out, and I didn't really give her the opportunity to do so because I wanted to surprise her completely with it. So hopefully I got some cool stuff. Um, for the designs themselves, uh, they were space-themed. So one of them is this guy is like standing on a beach. It's real dark. And he's doing some mystical wiggly things with his fingers. And then he's a small part of the picture and he's at the bottom of the picture. And then going up top, this like smoke starts to billow out of his hand and it fills up kind of the night sky. And the night sky is like multiple different colors. It's all like, you know, like uh, but it, it's, it's like a galaxy type thing. So there's like reds and yellows and oranges and all sorts of stuff. And it just, it looks really, really neat and some greens and such in there. So I feel like uh, that's going to be one that's just visually appealing and looks really cool. And I haven't taken them out of the, like the protective plastic that's covering them. They, they seem a little bit duller than I was expecting, but I don't have light shining on them and I don't have them out of the plastic, so we'll see. Another one is a planet with, I think there's a spaceship in front of me, a small one. Right, the planet's bigger and it's like a, it's like some purples and like some magenta colors and dark blue, like kind of like cold colors. And it looks really, really neat. And then one I got is a, a yin yang of a moon, essentially, uh, with like a shadow and another thing. Because uh, she definitely likes the moon and she's a big fan of yin yang. In fact, that's one of the symbols she decided to correlate to her business, and that's on her business card. Is a yin -yang, so. Good times all around, I suppose. Hopefully, I did well. I guess I'll let you guys know when we get closer to Christmas, or I suppose after Christmas. Uh, what she thought of them. Hopefully, hopefully she liked them. Like I said, I, I'm always looking for interesting and just fun things or just cool things that I think she would enjoy. Like one year I got her a plasma ball. You know, the thing that you go to the you know science museums and it's the glass ball with the lightning inside shooting around and you touch it and it goes to your hand because of you know, your polarity or whatever. I got her one of those and she's like, that's so cool. And then unfortunately they broke. I think both of them broke or maybe just one. I don't remember. I ended up getting two because one, after a few years, decided to finally break on her. And this is all stuff like for her office, so it has this you know, a different look and feel as she's doing the reflexologies and massage things that she does. Anyway, long story short, or short story long, uh, hopefully she likes what, what I got her. I always try to get something interesting, unique, and something that she would never ever think to get for herself, or even something that she might not want for herself. Haven't always succeeded. Um, I don't think there's anything that she particularly didn't like, but, yep, cutting is complete. We did it, folks. But as you see, uh, well, we didn't quite do it yet. we got to finish this up. One year I got her something that she's wanted for a long time, and it was, uh, you guys will laugh, it was, a, it was a file cabinet. So we got a little bit of a grass thing that we missed over there on the left. We did a pretty good job, actually. I've seen a lot of stuff that we missed. Alright, well, let's go head back and we'll load up and that's going to be it. So yes, the file cabinet's probably the one that's kind of like the, you did the what? You got her what now? But again, she used it. It was something practical that she really wanted. And I'm sure you guys don't know my wife as well as I do. If you do, there's going to be a problem. We're going to have some words, but... She, uh, one of her favorite stores is Staples or Office Depot, right? She likes going into, you know, office supply stores. That's one of her favorite places to go. She just likes looking around at various things. So, while it sounds like a very strange thing, and it is, I didn't want to cut any of this. Did 
Go what? No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm like, I should just go and 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 go drive like a, a line through his yard and then leave. It's kind of funny. Well, there we go, folks. Well, I'm hoping this recording came out a little bit better than the last one. All right, let's take a look at the the horrible things that we did. Uh, we destroyed three flowers. We crashed a bunch of times, and we had a little tiny bit of ground ground damage. And apparently, an incorrect cut height penalty. I don't know if that's coming off as something we're doing maybe too low or too high or whatever with um, with the strimmer, with the weed whacker. I'm not real sure, but still, not bad. We got a total of uh, 2,827.55 for that, which is good. That's actually a really good one. Uh, and then we get to take a look at what our other folks have done. So Poppy Joyce decided to bring us in uh, 858. So this is the one that I, I don't quite fully get so the value is 1120 but we get significantly less for that and i don't know why i haven't been able to figure that out 100 percent yet and this one was just a very small one 185 and you see we, we made a basically 100 bucks eh it is what it is all right, the advertising campaign brought us the extra RP. And then here we get to see what our total is. And apparently we had a weekly loss as opposed to any gains there. So we earned 7,549.41. Our employees earned 4,067. We ended up having to pay wages. We ended up having to pay penalties. We ended up uh, purchasing some vehicle i guess I, I don't i don't know what we did there uh the vehicle maintenance was oh ooh, up to a thousand that's that's expensive and then our bank loan was real high too so you see it it all kind of you know getting the bank loans and getting ahead early is good but then it gets you real nervous as you go on all right expert challenge zero one unlocked and that's that's pretty much it for today, I guess. I mean, like I said, my stories were not necessarily great, but it was you know, something to pass the time, something to share a little bit with you guys. Hopefully you had some fun. Let me know if you want to see me go back and continue the, the from the start, or if you don't mind me jumping ahead and playing the, the one that I currently have you know several hours into and just driving along and showing you guys different stuff when and where I can. Let's set up for next time just in case so you guys can see. And it looks like our episode will be going a bit longer than initially intended. So first things first, we're going to go do quick maintenance. I actually don't think this one had any maintenance. You definitely do. Full repair. Empty all that. Then we're going to go to the next. Oh, that attachment's maintenance. And finally, this one. And the others are fine. Like the other mowers are okay. Well, this mower is okay, but I definitely prefer my other one. It's my favorite. I, I do like my Turf Tiger. It Turf Tiger 2, excuse me, is real good. A lot of, a lot of fun. All right. But, yeah, still, this one's not too bad. 8.5 uh, top speed. This one's got a 7.5 top speed. This one's rough, 7. 7.5 is a little rough, too. This one's a zero-point turn one, though. It's a little bit better than this. Not super great, though. And then this one, 12. 12 miles per hour. It's great. Feels really good. All right, let's go take a look. Uh, we're not going to do the orchard ourselves this next time because it's going to be painful and unsatisfying. Uh, maybe we'll do the rear lawns. Oh, there's two orchards. Oh, that's strange. Valley Manor, and then this one, it's, this, it's not the same? I mean, they, they look... This is the one that we did. Uh, well, maybe it is. You know, it is. It is, right? That's the one we did. Maybe we'll do the other orchard, and we'll see what that one's all about. So let me set myself up for that one. Vehicle, you know, we go on Turf Tiger 2, baby. All day, every day, and it tells you the deck range is a little too high. I'm fine with it. Oh, I just realized we may have to <laughs> we may have to go buy some more strimmers. I, I completely forgot about this. Um, oh, oh, we apparently we have enough for everyone. Maybe 
We'll let Poppy Joyce go and take care of that one. Oh, no, no, we are going to have to buy additional skirmers. All right. See, this is why we uh, do things. Where do we buy those at? Equipment garage. Oh, okay. That's where. All right. Well, I'm going to buy a, at least one of these. Can I buy another one of these? I'm going to buy a couple, like, bad ones. Just, oh, God, I bought three. I don't know how I did that, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, no, I don't want to exit career mode. It's fine. It's, it's fine. All right. Give me back this one. You go to this one, and you get this. And then you're going to go here, and you're going to do this one. And you're going to be pretty bad at it, Aaron Griffin, but that's okay, because you've got this one. And that is going to take you a very long time. I hope you enjoy. It's going to be a bit rough. That's fine, though. Anyway, so we're going to be trying a different orchard next time around, and hopefully it all works out. All right, folks, uh, again... Do you want to see me start from the, the fresh campaign, or do you want to see me dive into this and just try to mix it up and do different ones each and every time we come back to this? Let me know down in the comments section. Let me know if you picked up the game, your favorite mower, and all that stuff, and your thoughts on the game in general. And until the very next episode, I have been your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show. We play, we fight, we conquer.